If we're going to be able to compete globally, we've got to get the debt down to below 70 percent of GDP, and we have to keep it on a downward path as a percent of the economy. Therefore, Al and I have come out with, a, or we're coming out this Friday with a new plan that will reduce the deficit not by $1.8 trillion uh, over the next decade, in addition to the $2.7 trillion that's already been done, but will reduce it by $2.5 trillion more. Uh, a quarter of that will come from reforming the tax code. An identical amount will come from making cuts of equal amount in both the beneficiary and the provider side of the Medicare program. A quarter will come from reducing uh, uh, spending in the other mandatory area and in the discretionary budget, both defense and non-defense. And a quarter will come from instituting new programs like the change CPI and reduced interest cost. That is really tough medicine. But we believe it will also solve our nation's long-term fiscal problem, and it will do so without disrupting a very fragile economic recovery. Because by getting rid of this sequester, we can actually reduce the cuts by about two-thirds in 2014 and 15, and 95 percent of our cuts are in 2016 when the economy is forecasted to be back rolling and unemployment is forecasted to be at 6.5 percent. Uh, look, this plan is not perfect. Uh, it's really tough. But the problem is real. The solutions are painful and there is no easy way out. Let me conclude by just telling you, uh, by giving you an analogy. It's an analogy I used at Chapel Hill the other day when one of the professors asked me why we had to do this. I said America is in the same position that the great Nobel Prize winning scientist Ernst Rutherford was when his Nobel Prize winning project was running out of money. He turned to his team and said, hey, we're running out of money. Now we got to start thinking. <laughs> well, that's what America is. We're running out of money. Now we got to start thinking. We got to make choices. We got to make tough choices. We got to make the hard political choices. I'm confident that if we do, the future of this country is very, very bright and we will be able to compete with the best and brightest wherever they are. And I'm equally confident that if we don't, our country is well on the way to becoming a second-rate power. So why I said yes to coming here today was to get you excited about what we can do to make America great, what we can do to instill growth in this country, what we can do to put our fiscal house in order. I came here to ask for your help, and I came here to ask you to do it for your grandkids. Do it for your kids. Do it for yourself. Do it for the country. Thank you very much.